Good afternoon. Welcome to this webinar on continuous compliance to various regulations. My name is Kishore Vaswani. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Control Case. And I really appreciate the time you have taken today to attend this webinar on continuous compliance in the context of cybersecurity as well as various IT regulations. That being said, let's go ahead and get started into uh, the meat of our presentation today when it comes to continuous compliance. We're going to talk a little bit about control case. We'll be spending a majority of our time on what are a, a tactical list of items you can take back from this webinar to put in place as part of your continuous compliance solution for your company, uh, including frequency challenges um, that may relate to it. So a little bit about control case. We focus on IT compliance, IT certification, and related continuous compliance services. Our focus really is to have a partnership approach with our customers and use SkyCam, our proprietary technology, to help streamline the IT certification as well as the continuous compliance process as we work with customers. From an overall perspective, uh, here are some of the IT compliance regimes we participate in. We are able to work with companies, do single assessments and help them get compliant, get ready or certified to one or multiple of these regulations in a single process. That was a high level on control case. Now let's uh, get into some of the continuous compliance uh, components, which is going to form the meat of our presentation. So when we talk about continuous compliance, a big part of that is to have dashboards and be able to monitor where you are in the compliance cycle as you go month after month, week after week, year after year within your enterprise. And that's really accomplished through the use of dashboards that are very necessary in order to monitor where your compliance status is. Uh, we'll touch on these domains at a very high level today. However, this is an important list that you can compare your programs to when it comes to compliance in general and continuous compliance in particular, because when we talk about continuous compliance, there are elements across these domains that are relevant to be put in place as part of a continuous compliance program. The first one is policy management. As many of you probably know, uh, most IT regulations out there require policies and procedures from a perspective of documentation uh, and, and presentation of that in various forms, including training for your internal employees and as artifacts for your business partners. So making sure you have policies and procedures and they're updated, monitored on a regular basis is an important part of policy, uh, of, of making sure you are continuously compliant to various regulations that you're required to be. Um, in today's world, it is very common to outsource business processes to specialist companies who are focused on providing you any particular business or service. And to that degree, uh, you, you, most companies today use third party vendors and third parties for outsourcing such activities. And while you can outsource business processes and, and risk, uh, but while you can outsource business processes, uh, you cannot outsource risk. And it is important for you to ensure that you are looking at your third party from a risk management perspective and ensuring that they are compliant and making sure that they don't uh, have you fall out of compliance. So a formalized ongoing program for vendor and third party management is key uh, to that. The third is asset and vulnerability management. 
uh, when we talk about asset and vulnerability management, um, the at, at the highest level, it is important to ensure that you have an asset inventory. It is important to ensure that you're identifying on an ongoing basis what are the vulnerabilities that may relate to that asset inventory, which include asset list, you know, management of vulnerabilities and dispositions. Uh, any non-compliance related aspects um, and so forth. So it is extremely important to ensure that you're doing asset and vulnerability management at a very high level. Um, next is logging and monitoring. Uh, and these are really two different components. One is logging, making sure that technologically wise, all the different assets that we talked about, whether it's the application layer, whether it's the operating system layer, you are capturing the right logs. That's number one. And then monitoring. While the logs are being captured, whether it's through alerts or through periodic reviews, monitoring of those logs is an important aspect. Next, let's talk about change management. Um, and this really ties some of the earlier parts I talked about uh, together. So when you do find, when, when you do find anomalies when it comes to logs, whether it's through your logging system or your, or your file integrity monitoring system or any of the other uh, ticketing systems, uh, it is important to first of all get the log as we talked about. Then as part of your investigation, uh, you've got to triage that against your change management system and try to identify whether any changes that happened that were unexpected were related to a ticket that has been formally approved in your change management system. Based on that, this could be an authorized change or it could be an unauthorized change, which really uh, escalates to an incident and uh, starting of the incident management process. So the incident and the problem management process is another aspect of continuous compliance. Uh, we talked about really the difference as we look at a 50,000 foot level between incident management and problem management is really uh, the frequency. Every ticket, every disposition individually can be called an incident. However, when you take a step back and you look at a whole bunch of incidents holistically over a period of a month or a quarter and then identify that into discrete projects that will help solve those types of incidents, that's called problem. So there's incident management, which is very discrete, and then there's problem management, which is looking at a bunch of discrete incident management issues and uh, running a project to solve it holistically. Uh, it depends on the type of the assets, whether it's applications, operating system, and so forth. In today's world, obviously, we are data heavy, and so data is stored in different places. You know, whether it's um, credit card data for PPI, whether it's healthcare data for HIPAA, whether it's energy data in the FERC or NERC sense. Across all these regulations, protection of data becomes extremely important and needs to be looked at as a continuous compliance aspect and not a static one-time process. What does that involve? Number one, it, I, making sure you know where the data lies. So identification of data is an important aspect. It is not always easily known where the data lies. And there are various tools out there that can be deployed to ensure that you are looking at data from a identification and uh, expected or non-expected existence of data as well. Once you know where the data is, and for the expected data, you want to make sure you're protecting it adequately. And that includes things like access control, but it also includes things like encryption, um, as well as monitoring of that data. Uh, risk management, uh, almost every regulation out there requires that companies perform a holistic risk management exercise at least once a year, maybe even more. Um, and what you're doing in risk management is identifying what your critical assets are, what is the risks to all those assets, what's the likelihood of that risk, and what's the impact of that risk. 
Um, so you're really looking at your company holistically every so often, whether it's quarterly or annually, to identify and make sure that the highest level risks have some mitigation plans and process. And in today's world, with the changing technology environment, it's important to make sure that this is refreshed frequently uh, as new technical risks uh, show up across the board. Uh, business continuity management. Um, again, a very important aspect of continuous compliance. Uh, as you probably can imagine, as uh, technologies change, environments change, you know, geopolitical conditions, conditions change. Um, it is important to have a plan that things do not derail business, whether it's at the system level, people level, or the process level. Having a plan and testing it on an ongoing basis is an important part of continuous compliance. And again, most uh, IT compliance regulations require business continuity. Next is HR management. From an HR management perspective, it is important to ensure that uh, the people aspect is looked from an overall perspective, and this could include things like training, it could include background checks, hiring practices, NDAs, and so forth. And again, all regulations have some component of HR management. Uh, physical security is still important, it used to be important, it's still important. Obviously, if you're in the cloud, your cloud provider is providing the physical security. If you're in an on-premise environment, then you're responsible for physical security and things like CCTV, badges, visit access, biometrics are all very important as they used to be. So, um, I've gone through at a very high level over things that you can compare your internal programs to and make sure you're monitoring all those aspects that we talked about from that list uh, against uh, you know, against all these regulations, but also against your own environment and having dashboards. Uh, these could be formal dashboards, these could be informal dashboards in a tool like Excel, but you wanna make sure that there is cadence to tracking each and every one of those items on an ongoing basis. Um, and it's, you know, one, one thing I wanted to make sure we, you get from this webinar is a list that you can put on one side and look at your enterprise on the other and say, hey, yeah, we are covering this adequately. We do have something in place. And do we have a dashboard in place for each of these or we don't? Um, when we talk about, uh, you know, we talked about the different domains. Uh, let me talk about what we at Control Case see a commonality across regulation on how frequently monitoring from a continuous compliance perspective for these domains uh, uh, is, a, you know, exists in the environment. So asset and vulnerability management, log management, change management, and incident problem management really are daily monitoring domains. Uh, you know, there are lots of vulnerabilities that come out all the time. Uh, even one unsolved vulnerability for an extended period of time can result in uh, you know, bad consequences, including breaches. You know, incidents happen all the time. Logs are being generated all the time. So these are really daily monitoring domains that need to be happening on an ongoing basis. Then there are some things which uh, can be done on a monthly or a quarterly basis as a best practice, managing your third party, ensuring you're searching for sensitive data and identifying unknown data, uh, training, background checks, and so forth. Uh, could be uh, you know, quarterly activities or quarterly checks to ensure it's happening on an ongoing basis. Obviously, not background checks every quarterly, but making sure background check process is enabled every, um, you know, every quarterly. Uh, and then finally, you have uh, domains that typically are done on an annual basis, whether it is running a BCP PR test, whether it's making sure your policy is updated on an annual basis whether it is ensuring that you have performed an enterprise risk management process. All of these things are important from an annual perspective as you go through and look uh, through your environment. Some of the common challenges we see, you know, redundant efforts across these regulations. You know, budgets are decreasing all the time. You gotta do more with less. 
making sure that not only that you identify the issues, but you're able to fix them on a timely manner, right? Because a lot of times systems break when you apply patches, as an example. Uh, the regulations only keep on increasing. The budgets only keep on decreasing. Lack of dashboards. These are some of the common challenges you see that you go across the enterprise uh, and across the environment when it comes to compliance, compliance to the next regulation, and then further doing it on a continuous basis. So um, as we end this webinar, again, please feel free to put any questions in the questions window across any IT regulation or continuous compliance aspect and we'll answer them. Uh, but certainly at Control Case, you know, we are not a checklist auditor, we follow and make sure that we are your partners in uh, your assessment, compliance and certification uh, efforts, uh, certainly, we focus on automation and ensuring that we are uh, using automation wherever possible to make the process a streamlined uh, process. Uh, and then continuous compliance is a key element of uh, what we do. And, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, automations, both automation and evidence collection, real-time dashboard and predictive engineers compliance services are key to what we do. Um, our continuous compliance services really ensure that we are looking at things on a frequent basis. Uh, for example, you know, we uh, on a logging, we'll be looking at it on a daily basis, uh, scanning and so forth, we'll be looking on a quarterly basis. And we provide to you a dashboard that shows you, you are compliant with a mapping to all the different regulations on an ongoing basis uh, from a continuous uh, process perspective. Um, that was all I had for the day. So we went, you know, in today's webinar, we went through uh, a bunch of things. We went through going, uh, you know, the list of things that need to be looked at from a continuous compliance perspective. We went through a checklist of things that you can compare against your program. And we talked about the importance of a dashboard uh, when it comes to continuous compliance. We at Control Case certainly uh, work with customers on certifying them to multiple regulations. Many of the customers we work with also engage us for continuous compliance when it comes to uh, you know, multiple uh, regulations uh, and uh, compliance aspects out there. Uh, and we have technology to ensure you can look and have dashboards of continuous compliance. That being said, I will now answer the questions that have been asked, and then uh, feel free to ask additional questions. Uh, the first question is, when it comes to PCI and HIPAA as an example, uh, can you do a single compliance activity and monitor it from an ongoing basis in a combined manner? Um, and that's a great question. So when we look at uh, the examples you use, PCI, it relates to card data and HIPAA relates to healthcare data. Now, if these, both these, uh, if all this data lies in a common environment or your whole infrastructure is in scope, really you could do a single exercise and then make sure you're complying to both PCI and HIPAA along with, of course, the controls that are specific to it. The benefit of that method is if, of including your entire scope is that you just need to monitor it from a standardized perspective whether trying, well, instead of trying to monitor it from you know, a credit card and a healthcare perspective. And in fact, that is the best practice we would recommend that companies take, i.e. take your entire scope and then map it out to HIPAA, PCI, and other cuts, but really monitor it from an ongoing basis holistically. The second question is, how does privacy relate to all of this? Uh, again, another great question. When it comes to continuous compliance, it is important to make sure you are monitoring what type of data you're looking at. And information security and privacy are merging very quickly and working hand in hand, uh, centered around the data classification aspect we talked about. So when we talked about the data classification aspect, which is identifying where your data lies, how it flows through the system, and whom is it shared with, that really touches on some of the security comp components, but also on some of the privacy components. 
um, along with the fact that we also talked about some regulations such as GDPR and CCPA, which are focused on uh, privacy and security. Uh, again, please feel free to put any questions you have in the questions window. The third, uh, the last question I have right now, uh, can we use control case to monitor NIST 853 compliance to FedRAMP? Uh, and that answer is yes, we do uh, support NIST 853, FISMA, FedRAMP uh, as one of the regulations uh, that, that we do support. Um, well, if any, if any of you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us at www.controlcase.com. Reach us at contact at controlcase.com and we'll be able to answer any of the questions you may have uh, on an ongoing basis uh, from that perspective. So thank you for your time. Have a great day. Everybody be safe. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you in our next uh, webinar, which you can see at www dot controlcase dot com